Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where we look at all things crypto and all things money related. First, we're just going to quickly go over the mainstream news, which is crypto exchange KuCoin violated anti-money laundering laws. Binance executive detained in Nigeria in crypto case escapes custody. I never fully understand why when people escape custody, how they possibly think they're going to kind of survive not being caught again because uh, the world's quite a small place with uh, the technology we have nowadays okay ftx customers in line for higher payouts as crypto price soars and the eu scrap scraps proposed 1k limit payment limit for self-custody crypto wallets and lastly london stock exchange to launch bitcoin and ethereum etns so if you don't know what etns are here is a google description ETNs are structured products that are issued as senior debt notes, while ETFs represent a stake in an underlying commodity. ETNs are more like bonds in that they are unsecured. ETFs provide investments into a fund that holds the asset it tracks, like stocks, bonds, or gold. Okay, going on to X, so Twitter, we've got first one is from Digital Asset Investor. I'm going to word this in a way that's friendly for YouTube. Uh, he basically says, are you not entirely happy with the state of politics at the moment? If you're not, then maybe think about going uh, and voting for John Deaton for his Senate position. OK, this is from James Rule XRP. HSBC will be launching tokenized gold tomorrow to its retail client, said Hong Kong Chief Digital Officer Bojan Obradovic during a panel at the Milken Institute Global Investors Symposium. This will mark the first form of tokenized real world assets that is introducing to the segment. So pretty cool. Tokenized gold, HSBC. Moving on. Kobayashi letter. Okay, yeah, we're not going to go too much into this. So there was that certain president who's in a bit of trouble at the moment. Um, and he has a stock which has gone up by a huge amount. So obviously I'm talking about Trump. Uh, I don't really want to talk about too much about him. Just because YouTube don't seem to like certain, uh, a lot of political things, they don't seem to like people to speak about. But obviously, he's got to come up with all the money from his lawsuit. And uh, his Trump media stock is basically skyrocketing. The stock is up over nearly 100% over the last five days. And it's put his uh, net worth up to about six and a half billion. Uh, I believe there is a more recent one that's even higher than six and a half billion. So. Yeah, he's certainly making good money at the moment. Ratha Kahneman. Ripple cited a few times in the new MasterCard report, the future of remittances in Latin America, digitalization, multiple rails, and the strategic role of partnerships as an example of blockchain in remittances and CBDCs. XRP not directly mentioned. I was listening to something about On Africa. I think it's called the payment solution that they have in Africa that's going to, it connects something like 500 million people. It's absolutely insane. But the point of me talking about this, and they are a partner of Ripple, they have partnered with Ripple, the company. Uh, but just when you listen to so much of the, so many of these wealth mentors, there's so much kind of growth potential uh on the whole continent of Africa as well as other areas of the world, that it seems to be that the big money, the kind of the smart money are now going, well, okay, you look at the West, the West is so built up already that, you know, how much more kind of building can we do? Whereas you've got these areas that are just ripe for investment, for building, for economic development, etc. So I think more and more money is going to go that way. And it's interesting to see that uh, Ripple is partnered with so many countries kind of in, in many of these regions, as well as the much more modernized regions. Regions. Okay, this is from Nature is Amazing, completely unrelated to crypto. But it says, pandas, pandas usually give birth to twins. However, they would neglect one and keep the other one close. So what these caretakers are doing is that they give mummy panda an apple to eat then swap one baby with another. This way, both babies are fed properly. So it's kind of cool. It's basically this big panda with its baby in the cage and the zookeeper comes along, gives it an apple and takes one of the babies away. 
And then when they come back, they actually give it one of the other babies uh, so that it looks after them both. But I think this video was doing the rounds and people are going, oh, that's really unfair. Why are they taking one of the babies? Uh, but they are helping. And you know what? Pandas are worth an awful lot of money because they're an endangered species, but they're also very uh, important for culture of Japan, etc. I think it's Japan. Pretty sure it's Japan and not China. Don't quote me on that. Okay, Kobayashi letter, always interesting to read. New home prices are from their highs in bear market territory and falling faster than rates seen in 2008, according to Revenger. New home prices peaked in late 2022 at 497,000 and have fallen to 401,000 as of the latest date. So that's quite a lot. So since 2022, you're down almost 100,000, almost a fifth. In the financial crisis, new home prices dropped by 23% from 2007 to 2010, according to Revenger. We are down roughly the same amount in just one and a half years or half the amount of time. Still, new home prices are 20% above pre-pandemic levels and existing home supply is near record lows. Is the housing market beginning to crack? The reason why I included this is because in a dream world for my personal circumstances being invested in crypto, I think it would be fantastic to hit the bull run, uh, get some good profits out of crypto and then put them into real estate. And if it worked out, depending where you're looking at it from, if house prices came down and you actually saw a property crash, a really hard property crash as countries go into recession, but yet you've got all of this money from a crypto bull run, then there will be a lot of crypto people out there that will be buying up property. Okay, let's see what else we have. And um, we've done that. This is a, another one from the Kobayashi letter. Issuances of US treasuries are Sorry, let me just get back to this. Twitter has this really annoying way of putting things in the way of other things. Okay, issuances of US treasuries are now at pandemic levels. We saw nearly 7 trillion in gross issuances of US treasuries in just three months during 2023. For the entire year of 2023, a whopping 23 trillion in US treasuries were issued. US federal debt is rising by 1 trillion every 90 days right now. U.S. government spending at a percentage of GDP is at World War II levels. So when you kind of listen to these financial experts going, oh, you know, we're getting inflation under control, and everything's fine here, and we have a strong economy, you're like, okay, there's a lot of things that don't look particularly healthy. Cody Sanchez, the average person thinks having a job is safer than starting a company. They're wrong. Here's why. I included this because you've always got this kind of, I've always got this mental argument in my head of working for someone else and being self-employed. I am self-employed and I have been self-employed for many years. I'm a personal trainer. I've got other projects on the go. But being self-employed is, it wears you down. It's very tiring because you have to be the expert of everything. You have to do your marketing. You have to do your research. You have to do every single department that a company would normally have people doing those type of things. My wife is full-time employed by a company and she gets a steady income. Whereas when you're self-employed, you never know whether you're going to have a great year or whether you're going to have a really bad year. Okay, the bearable bull. The, the people that are complaining about the XR priest, XRP price don't realize that they are the indicator. I really like that. It was a good, I think it's a clever comment. The people that are complaining about the XRP price don't realize that they are the indicator. So again, when you look at the sentiment of the crypto markets, what we're basically looking for at the moment is for euphoria. We want everyone to be in that extreme greed, euphoric, yeah, money money is everywhere. Bitcoins hit all new all-time highs and they're going to start throwing money into the meme coins, etc. That is when you need to be concerned. That is when you need to take profits. But when everyone's really down in the dumps, Generally, that is an indicator, the good indicator when people are starting to sell out because they're fed up, that that's kind of when price action happens. Again, these things don't happen, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, quite possibly, or in a week. But if you take a macro view of, you know, when in doubt, zoom out at kind of 
where we've come, where we are, what you know, cryptocurrencies are doing as a whole, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, what XRP and Ripple, the company, is doing with the lawsuit, how that lawsuit is winding down, how the SEC has lost on everything that counts with that particular lawsuit. You can enter a world where Ripple, the company, and XRP are one of the only ones with legal clarity around the world. But also, you've got huge institutions now looking at cryptocurrencies, looking at Bitcoin, looking at Ethereum. This space, is there's just so much money that's going to be pouring into this space. It's insane. And when you look at things like HSBC, uh, tokenized gold, everything's going to be tokenized. There are so many elements of this kind of financial jigsaw puzzle that we are looking at as crypto researchers, financial researchers. And just every single bit of this puzzle seems to be touching blockchain somewhere, which is why they describe blockchain technology as one of the most destructive technologies that we have seen in recent years, because it won't change every company in the same way, but it will change every company. So one company might need to adopt blockchain for this reason. Another one will adopt blockchain for another reason, but it will disrupt the way every single company is kind of is functioning. I have so many conversations with people where their companies are kind of, you know, dipping their toes into the blockchain world because they realize they have to, otherwise they're going to let, get left behind. And this is kind of that fantastic famous speech with Gary Gensler, and I forget the guy's name who was up on stage. He basically said at first, the banks will try and ignore cryptocurrencies and then they'll try and destroy cryptocurrencies. They'll get their friends and their buddies in power to get lawsuits etc against crypto what have we seen exactly what he spoke about and then he said these people will realize or the big institutions the legacy system will realize that crypto is just too big it's not going to work to go away and so they're going to then as the final piece of that jigsaw puzzle to adopt the technology and we i think really are at that time where just every single company is having to adopt cryptocurrency. I'm not specifically talking about XRP. I'm talking about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology as a whole. So I think this space is going to be just worth trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars going forward. And I think if you have strong enough hands, you know, you're going to do very well. Sell to get some profit out, but, you know, each to their own. Whatever you want to do, I think. But though I think those who hold a bag for the future which I will do for my children, I think, uh, you know, it's a fairly good academically sort of good solution, a good idea, rather. Okay, Jeremy Hogan. Let's wait until Ripple's brief. I think they have some strong arguments for pretty much zero. So Jeremy Hogan is just replying how the SEC is looking for, I think it's something like $2 billion dollars from Ripple, the company, and, you know, the SEC is just losing and losing and losing, and Jeremy Hogan, good guy, he's got a, he is a lawyer, so he's a, a good person to listen to, is basically saying, let's wait until Ripple's brief. I think they, i.e. the SEC, have some, str uh, no, sorry, they, uh, Ripple, the company, have some strong arguments for pretty much paying zero money. And that really would be a big loss to the SEC. But again, it's a ridiculous situation because if the SEC loses, it doesn't really matter. They're, pay they're playing with taxpayers' money. They're, to them, it's kind of free money. Okay, watch a guru just in. US government indicts crypto exchange KuCoin and two of its found, uh, founders on criminal charges, citing a multi-billion dollar criminal conspiracy. Yeah, we looked at that one already. Okay, Alex Tormozzi, known as the $100 million man. Whenever you think someone had it easy, it's usually a sign that you don't know them that well. I thought it was kind of a good comment because so many people, you see people that are doing well, people that are doing financially well, and you just go, oh, they've got it so easy, and oh, their life's absolutely wonderful. But yeah, chance, chances are when you get to know these people and work out how they got their money, if they made their money themselves, they probably had quite a tough journey to get there. Thought this was interesting. Chris Larson is chipping in, and this is in regards to a Brad Garlinghouse comment. So Brad Garlinghouse basically said, Gensler's SEC has repeatedly acted outside the law, not going unnoticed by judges admonishing the agency for a gross abuse of the power entrusted to it by Congress. And Chris Larson is basically saying, Gensler's SEC has become unhinged. This will not and should not go unnoticed in an election year. As the SEC single-handedly thinks it's above the law, dragging the US further behind other G20 countries. 
Okay, David Joel Katz. He goes, I, I, I have a love and hate relationship for David Schwartz because I think he should just stick to crypto instead of kind of getting into politics, etc. But he says, he's talking about Elon Musk, self-proclaimed defender of free speech, smacked down by court for trying to get the government to punish people for engaging in protected speech that he does not like. Nobody, nobody could have predicted this. And this is basically in regards to Elon Musk, who took, I forget what they're called now. Uh, let me see if I can quickly, uh, uh, bought a case against the CCDH for basically trying to stop, trying to persuade advertisers not to advertise on the platform of X. I'm no lawyer, I don't fully understand, but yes, you have freedom of speech, but I don't know if there's laws where if you actively try and hurt a company, that there are laws that stop you from doing that. I don't know. I don't know enough about that stuff. But my point really is, I kind of wish David Schwartz would just stick to the crypto, personally. And that is everything we have for you today. Uh, yes, that is all. So we try and keep this channel as unpolitical as possible because politics is boring and it's not a particularly nice place to spend too much time in. However, unfortunately, crypto is always related to politics because politicians are the very people that are going to make up the rules of the road that we are all going to have to abide by. So